just talk to us a little bit about, first of all, your, your, your feelings about the film, what you saw. Well, this was actually my first time seeing the film. Um, hmm. So I came in with uh, blind eyes. Hmm. <laughs> um, it was, some things were disturbing because I hadn't seen the film and there was a lot of footage in there that I've never had a chance to watch. Hmm. And, um, you know, I hurt for him and what he had to go for, you know, go through. Uh, however, you know, he came, we know what the end result was. So, uh, um, but aside from that, I mean, I thought it was very, I thought it, the essence of my father, it, it definitely uh, presented itself in the film. And it was the first time that um, I was upset about what was happening at the, you know, during those times, mm -hmm. so. When you, when, you, when you reflect, I mean, we saw one of your sisters who was featured pr pretty prominently uh, in, in the film. Yes, and she put the most flattering picture in, <laughs> in that film, so I got a bone to pick with her when I'm done here. <laughs> but, just, but just, you know, and I understand that the family comes together and, and, and all the children, and, uh, you know, what, what, is that, what is that like, being a daughter of, 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 of Muhammad and, and being part of the, the Ali family, if you will? It's interesting because there are nine different personalities. Um, I'm very, I'm probably closest to my youngest sister, that's Layla. Um, Han, I'm also very close. With. We spent um, Father's Day with our dad this, this past Father's Day. Mm -hmm. um, it's always a good time. Mm -hmm. You're always gonna get a laugh and somebody's gonna get on someone's nerves. Sure. Um, <laughs> but everyone has a really great sense of humor. Right. We're all a little nutty in our own way. And um, you know, we love being together. And we're actually all friends. And I, I think that was, you know, it's something my father's always wanted. He, you know, he brought us together every summer. Um, and even after his divorces, um, I still spent time with my, I call them my bonus moms. Mm -hmm. I never refer to them as stepmoms because mm -hmm. it's like, it's a, it's a very blended family. Right. And again, everybody gets along very well. And um, it's important to all of us to remain and stay close. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Bill, first of all, just you know, powerful film. But your your reflections, what 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 resonated with you in, in watching the film the most? Um, well, everything. First of all, it was wonderful having you here. Thank you. Uh, and um, I thought, you know, I, I've seen a fair amount of Ali, you know, Ali films, and I think that the team did an excellent job. I mean, and, and you can never get enough of Ali. I mean, you can never get enough right. Muhammad Ali. Right. Um, a couple things uh, uh, resonated, and uh, I think I may have first met your dad. Uh, I used to work at you know, the Ebony Magazine mm -hmm. uh, back in like 1974, and there was a period of time uh, during sort of, Ali would always be like a, a Johnson Publishing Company, always come up with Johnson Publishing Company, you know, because <laughs> you know he was, you know, you know, back then, particularly when he was going through like exiles and things like that, Johnson Publishing Company was a home. He was like always on the cover and stuff. He'd come up and one of my really good friends got in Greg Sims. For whatever reason, he and Greg was a sports editor at Jet Magazine. And for whatever reason, he and Ali were like tight. And so this is when he was living in, like in Chicago and yeah, around, Park. yeah, in Hyde Park. Hyde Park. So, he, so yeah, Greg would come up like, well, hey man, uh, Champ said, come on over. Come on over to Champ's house, you know. So I said, wow. Okay, and it's probably the only time today, because you know, that was like 1970 something, and since then, I've, you know, you've been around a lot of athletes and that kind of stuff, but that was the first, probably maybe the last time I was around somebody, and I, I, didn't know, I did not know what to say. Mm. I think back on it, I said, man, you really were like an idiot, because <laughs> we go to his house, and I'm thinking, I was thinking, I said, hey. At Ali's house, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and Ali would be like in the kitchen or something, and I, I did not know what to say. Right. I was just, I had nothing to say, no questions, no conversations, <laughs> nothing. I'm like just thinking, well, so to go from there to here, and and um, uh, but you asked one specific thing, mm. which I think is when when he was uh, talking to David Frost, no, no, not David Frost, but um, David Suscon. 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 well, Suscon too, but no, um. Bar Buckley. 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 Yeah. Buckley. It was classic. Mm. You know, because he was trying that whole English shit to, to put, and Ali, which is Ali, the, he cut right through it. Yeah. He cut right through it and grabbed him around the throat. Right. And basically on national TV said, F you, and basically <laughs> shrunk him. Right. 
struck him. You know, and you could tell, you could tell Buckley said, whoa, because he'd come in there like a fight comes in a fight thinking, I got this. And I've seen Ali shrink people. Right. And he shrunk. But, and, that's, and, and just with the sheer force of his beliefs, you know, the sheer force of his beliefs and that I'm right and you're wrong and you know you're wrong. Mm. And that's what he said, I'm right, you're wrong, Not only, and you were the representative of wrong. Right. And you knew, and the whole weight of that righteousness just shrunk him. And that's, to me, who Ali is. And, and, I, just want, one of the, and I think that why this, is, why this is such an important film to put in, particularly put in front of athletes. Mm. Because back then, the industry, sports was not the major cultural pillar that it is now. He, he was. But the industry itself was in terms of the African American mm. involvement in it. Mm. Right now, it's a multi billion dollar industry which African Americans are the foundation of. Mm. And what he showed the way is, and, 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 and the thing is, what I, what I, how I approach things like this is like athletes watch a lot of game film. Mm. They watch tons and tons of game film. And when they watch game film, you know, they're not watching, and it's all game filmers of the past. You're not watching anything, if you all game filmers of the past. You know, but you're not watching the film of the past to see, oh, I look good in that play. You're watch they watch you critically to find out what I did wrong, what my opponent did wrong, how do I exploit what he did wrong, how do I correct what I did wrong. It, it's all about preparing for what? The future game. Right. It's all about, so when I look at that, I say, okay, what about that? Should we put, particularly all these guys who just dealt with the Donald Sterling thing and all that, what about that mm -hmm. is relevant for 2014? Mm -hmm. And what is it? Courage, yes. commitment, and these guys are in a much stronger position financially than he ever was. Mm -hmm. But I think what you gain from that is that do you have the heart? Do you have the commitment? Mm -hmm. Do you have and do you have the backing? So anyway, so those are just there's so many yeah. things that 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 are, but those are kind of well, snapshots. Let me ask let me ask you this, Bill, and then I want to ask you something too, Watson, just a second as well. But 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 given what you just said, Bill. Could a Muhammad Ali exist today? Yeah, I mean, you know, John Brown could be, anybody can exist <laughs> today if you have the courage and the heart. You know, and, and you know, you know, um, but the, 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 the thing is, for example, the closest thing, the short answer is back, see, the, in anticipation of that question, mm -hmm. I was just thinking about there's so much money, there's so much hush money passed around today, mm -hmm. whether it's LeBron, I mean, right. mm -hmm. Michael, you know, I mean, so yeah, you got more visibility is greater than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. You know, LeBron, remember, you know, people talking about LeBron, we had the World Cup going on, mm -hmm. and people over here were saying, as soon as the, the United States lost, they said, we want to deal with LeBron. Right. You know, LeBron, we want to hear what LeBron has to say, you know. Uh, but, the, but the problem is, the money and the agents mm -hmm. are just so, you know, that, that guys are scared. They're scared to lose stuff that they, you know, that, that they never had before. So, yes, you have Floyd Mayweather. I mean, you, yes, you know, what, what exists today that exists? Still war. Mm -hmm. War is still horrible now as it was then. Mm -hmm. You still have young people being put in prison, probably to a greater extent right. now than then. Right. So there's plenty of stuff to speak out about. Right. But, you know, but, but, that, but that's the point. Yeah. There's yeah. plenty of stuff to speak out about, but I don't, who, who do we point to? Who is that transcendent figure? Ali. We should talk about Ali. No, but I mean, today. Who, who? Ali. <laughs> mm. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That, that's what's so, part because it just reminds you. And, and, and you were saying, when you look at this stuff, it reminds you how, how uh, much of a conviction that this guy had. I mean, he may have started, you know, but I mean, the, the stuff he went through was real. It wasn't, it wasn't a joke. They were about to put him away. And I, I gotta tell you, and every time I write a Muhammad Ali column, I'm stunned by the amount of, of hatred. There are plenty of people we saw in those movies, you know, in those films, those little young guys. There are plenty of people there who are now kind of come out like they like. There are lots of people who still hate Ali. They hate what he stood for. They hate what he, what he continues to stand for. He still continues to be, to me, a source of strength, a source of honor, courage. Uh, grace under pressure, all those great things that, that everybody needs, but particularly African Americans at this juncture mm -hmm. of our existence mm -hmm. need. So to answer your question, um, yeah, I mean, there could be, there could be plenty of people uh, to stand up 
uh, athletes stand up, but the problem is there's sort of been a loss of courage. Absolutely. Right. That's, that's precisely my point. Um, Want to, I want to ask you, uh, you know, through the eye of a filmmaker okay, as, as okay. you are. So how do you, okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, first, yeah. Of, first of all, <laughs> your, your, your reflections on the film, mm -hmm. number one. But number two, also, uh, as you talked about the scene with William Buckley and how Ali handled that, mm -hmm. I thought it was very interesting, the earlier scene opening in the beginning of the movie with William Susskind, uh, how that, you know, they didn't really, you, you didn't see Ali's comeback in that and I was just mm -hmm. curious as to know you know as a filmmaker yeah. how you thought that scene was used to set I, up what I, we I saw. thought it was a very clever technique to start, start off with that kind of dismissive demonization then take the next 90 minutes to answer it mm. so that was very 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 good good device excellent device okay and then your general just general reflections on the film you know uh, first of all you can't really go wrong because you love the subject, but I thought it was really well, <laughs> well crafted. Right. And if and, and it's, but it also, it, the frustration I have is oftentimes those opportunities to tell those stories don't go to African American filmmakers because of funding and financing. So I just know so many great African American documentary filmmakers, and I wish they had got those opportunities. Right. And so, I'm really it's a great, great story, great told well, but I always l lobby for us to tell our own stories. Absolutely, absolutely. Great, great, great. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but before we go to the audience, we wanna, we wanna take some questions really from you and reflections, or any pointed questions for anybody in particular. On in fact, on, on both sides, there are microphones. Please, within, from your seats, please yep. go there because we, we're recording this yep. we're on, on our website. So please, on both sides <laughs> and landings, there are mics. That's great. Thank you, as you, as you, as you make your way, and I wanted to, to thank Warrington for the opportunity to, to be here. Um, I am my, uh, I told him I am one of the biggest Ali fans in the world. And, uh, and for me, that came really because of my dad. Uh, is, is, is dad, are you still here in the, in the audience? Is he here? Yeah, dad, stand up real quick. That's my, that's my father, everybody, Phil All Banks right. Jr. All right. and, and the reason why, the reason why I just wanted to point it out was because you imagine uh, my dad was a New York City police officer for 27 years uh, and, uh, and raised three boys. Him and my mom raised three boys in New York City. I'm the oldest of the three. Uh, my younger brother Terry is here as well. But my dad was just a great, great, great Ali fan. Mm. And, uh, and so you know, we, felt like we, we felt like Ali was part of our family. <laughs> That, that's, that's how much we knew and loved Ali, not only from the, just the classic, uh, you know, his skills as a great boxer uh, that the, the world had never seen in terms of being a heavyweight who moved like a little guy, uh, being ahead of his time, but more importantly for what he stood for and standing up for the courage of his convictions, um, for me as a black boy growing up in New York City and looking at Ali, um, I can't even begin to tell you how much his life inspired me mm. and still does to this day. And, uh, uh, and so much so that uh, my, my, I have four children, including a set of twins, mm. and both of whom I've named Aaliyah and Ali. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and my son Ali is here. Ali, where are you? Stand up, Ali, and let him know that's my son, and he is my absolute inspiration directly from Muhammad Ali and all that he meant to me. <laughs> and so uh, it's hard to top that, right? That's great. Why don't we take a question here? For, thank you, sir. Yeah, hi. Um, my question is open to anyone who can answer it. Um, when you said that the, the opening shot with uh, the interview with David Susskind was a great device, I thought it was so powerful that I couldn't wait to get down here and ask about that scene. Mm. Because Muhammad Ali was, was hit with so much hatred and vitriol in that one scene that it was, to me it was a shocker. I've never seen that, that, that footage before. Um, and he was pretty much attacked by everyone from the mainstream uh, media of the time uh, on down the line. And I was just wondering, my question actually is, has there, ever, has there ever been a reconciliation with those individuals like David Susskind? They came out with so much hatred and vitriol down the road when they realized in retrospect, well, maybe this guy did deserve my respect, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You know, did anybody ever turn around and come out publicly and say, I was wrong? Right. I judged this man wrong. Because in, you know, the things like that have happened in other circumstances. Sure. But I wonder, in, in Muhammad Ali's case, did that ever occur? That's a great question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you have uh, insight? I mean, I have an I have You probably have. Opinion, have. But I have Go ahead. Well, you know, the, the thing is, I mean, this is generally, I mean, you start, you, you, the next thing was with George Bush, remember? When Bush, there, like I said, there's a whole squadron of people who hated Ali, but who either came around or just right. were re resigned that, <laughs> you know, one of my mentors, my mentors was Sam Lacey, uh, who was Sam Lacey was a great African-American sports writer who discovered Jackie Robinson and all that kind of stuff. And what he, he, he used to always tell me, he said, you know, you're, you're going to be stunned by the people who were racist in like 1945 and 20, you know, 29, they've completely become chameleons. You know, they're completely, they, you know, they're, 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 they're experts on knowing which way the wind blows. And so there are a lot of, there are a lot of people, I'm not sure specifically your question, whether Suska and, 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 and Ali ever made, but I would be willing to bet because that's the first thing when I saw, when I saw that, mm -hmm. I wanted to go back mm -hmm. and find out what was uh, David's f final public statement mm -hmm. on Ali. I'm willing to bet now, I'll see you my email, you guys get mailed. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm willing to bet that there was some kind of reconciliation, not quite reconciliation, but you know, clearly the tide was so heavily in Ali's favor that he was right. And guys like, particularly liberals, you know, liberals always got to stay on the right side of, yeah. of, of the thing. You know, it's like a full-time <laughs> job to stay on the right side of, of history. Right. So you see this thing shift, you know, oh, yes, well, I was always there, you know, and um, yes, I, I, of course, I was just the person of my times, you know, sure. that kind of stuff. So I'm sure, I'm sure there was that kind of uh, thing. But at a narrow level, I know sports writers, Dick Young and a lot of guys, mm. when it became clear that it shifted, they shifted too. That's right. Almost a, to reinvent history, like it never ever, <laughs> I never was even on that side. I don't even <laughs> know whoever said that, right, you know. Right, right, right. right. That's right. And I think, right. It's all, I think it's also important to note that it wasn't, it wasn't just white folk. Right. Uh, right. right. You know, uh, you gotta remember, this is right. part of what made Ali such a transcendent figure. He was ahead of his time. It's, 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 it's interesting when you look at, some of our iconic figures in the film, Joe Lewis, right. Jackie Robinson, right. Right, who were against Ali's position. Right. Um, and so you recognize that it wasn't simply a black and white issue. Right. Part of it was a generational issue. Mm. Uh, and the fact of the matter was that standing up for your country and going into service when you were called, no matter what your political ideology, was something that was very, very strongly supported by most Americans. And, and you know the interesting thing, and, and this is how I think Ali was so transformative because if it wasn't for him, there wouldn't be Kurt Flood. Absolutely. You know, right. But also, he transformed Jackie Robinson because when Carlos and, and Smith, um, it's you know, interesting in these films too, who you don't see. Mm. You didn't see Tommy Smith. You know, but, but that's another thing. Oh, but, oh, oh come on, come on. Give it. Give no, no, give no, it. no, no, no. I don't want to divert <laughs> okay, from the point. Okay, right. from the point of a very good film. Um, <laughs> but that he, but when Tommy Smith and John Carlos had the demonstration in 68, while Jesse Owens came out, of course, typically against it, right. Jackie Robinson was for it. He came out publicly mm -hmm. supporting Carlos and Smith. And I think it was because I think he realized he was on the wrong side mm -hmm. of, of history mm -hmm. with, your, you know, with your dad. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and to his credit, I mean, it, you know, it, to his credit, mm -hmm. he realized kind of quickly, he said, wow, you know, there were probably people who thought the same thing about me. Me and, and 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 sometimes you know we all get sucked into that, particularly black folks. When you're so eager to be on the the side of power, mm -hmm. and you make these blunders, right. you make these tactical blunders about being on the wrong side. Uh, you know, like well, anyway, let me stop. What I call out. <laughs> Hi, I actually wanted to go back to Mr. Rodin's point. You um, raised earlier the fact that in you know, portraying Ali and, and demonstrating his cultural impact and how he was really sort of a leader and, uh, and took a courageous stand in thought. I'm wondering, as somebody who sort of was raised in the 80s and, and came of age in the 90s, where the, the sort of the break occurred where people like a Muhammad Ali who achieved a, a measure of greatness in one area then use their platforms for political and social change so i'm just wondering like what happened because i can't remember like yeah. michael jordan well, that's what in, happened in parallel you know <laughs> is that was that the break 
Well, the, yeah, I mean, money happened. Money happened. Money, money happened. Uh, again, th there's a famous picture uh, around that same time. Remember, a lot of stuff happened around that, 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 that time. If you look at contention, 64, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a famous picture. Of, in fact, it's tied to Ali. In fact, it's That's probably, right. there was a famous picture mm -hmm. of Jim Brown. That's right. And remember, right around that same time when, when Ali was, was, um, uh, was deciding, I mean, we had, had taken that stance, Jim Brown, who was one of the greatest running backs of all time, he had just, he called together in, in Cleveland. He called all the top African-American athletes to Cleveland, to a meeting. Because yeah, it was Bill Russell, Kareem, uh, it was uh, Willie Davis, it was, um, it, it was, uh, uh, let's see, a, a lot of the top athletes, but the highlights were Bill Russell, Kareem, um, and so there are about 12 of them, and there's a famous picture, if you can yeah. find it. They all met in Cleveland, mm -hmm. and they met with Ali the night before to, to, to hear him out, to find out whether or not he really believed in what he, what he was saying. And so they, it was like two hours, and it was a grilling session. I mean, they grilled him because a lot of these guys were football players, and all that, you know, so they were like, you know, man, and they thought Ali was a pretty guy and all that, and all. they grilled him. Mm -hmm. And they came back and they held a press conference the next day saying that we are behind because we believe when they came out. Now, I, I mentioned that because the reason, if that would happen today, see, none of those guys had agents back then. Mm -hmm. See, none of them had agents. Right. See, none of them had agents. Today, the agent, and, and to your point, and most of the agents are white, mm -hmm. you know, you know, and plugged in, and they'd be saying, and maybe even some of the black ones, but they say, today with so much money on the line, they say, well, you, do you really want to do this? Do you really want to take this stand? Do you really want to do you really want to do this? Because there's a lot of money. There's contracts. To, remember what they said in the part of the movie where he, he was telling them, you're costing yourself yeah. right. millions of dollars. Well, he said, then, I didn't care. Today, they say, oh, you, you know, mm -hmm. you know. So, so to answer your, answer your question, it's, 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 it, I think it's a simple answer, complex, but it's like about the influx of large amounts of money, which has diluted courage. And conviction. Yeah. And, and there's a level of just social consciousness that um, so many in our community don't have, and particularly so many of our athletes just don't have at all. I think it's really interesting when you see that, that image. It, to me, I, I was so inspired by that to see Jim Brown, right? He was the greatest football player of that generation and of that era, and standing right next to and sitting right next to Bill Russell. I mean, all, but all of these guys during that time, off the ash, I mean, they, all of these guys had a level of consciousness mm -hmm. and were speaking out of, uh, about what was happening in society. Uh, and you just don't see that today. That's the reason why I asked the original question was, could an Ali exist today? Because even though it was, Ali lost $10 million, you know, and it seems like nothing by today's standards, Ali was the first million dollar fighter. Um, and, and in so many ways, what Ali did paved the way That's for right. these guys to make the hundred million dollar contract, they stand on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. And so for me, there's nothing more frustrating. Uh, and I'm always cautioned not to be so critical, but, but I can't help it when I look at the Michael Jordans and the Derek Jeters and the Tiger Woods and so many who I see as having, the reason they're making so much money is they're standing on the shoulders of a guy like Ali who mm -hmm. sacrificed everything right. so that they have the opportunity and they say nothing yeah. about any issue. Even if it's not the most controversial issue around racial politics or anything like that. There are issues like world hunger, children who need to be adopted by people. They, they don't speak out about anything. Yeah. And I find that extremely, extremely frustrating. I agree. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, um, how you doing? My name is Dan Custer. Um, I'm gonna say I'm a, um, in my younger days, okay, I, I was a, a, an Ali fanatic. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that uh, I remember uh, that took Ali beyond uh, just being a boxer was just after he uh, his title was taken away from him he went on a tour of the historically black colleges and universities and and those student bodies I say were the foundation of support that went out to their parents and to their churches and to the Baptist Church and told Ali's story. And I think that was one of the times, because I remember going to Lincoln University, and I was in school in New York, but my fraternity brothers, 
they called me Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated <laughs> and said that Don't Muhammad up in Ali here now. was going to be speaking <laughs> at Lincoln University and for the first time we would really hear the truth. So I think that tour of him going around to the HBCU schools mm -hmm. was very critical and was a foundation and I love him to this day and I was so happy to meet his daughter. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You know, you know, it's interesting when you when you when you point that out. You, you think think about this because I don't really often hear it told through this way. But Ali was a very very young guy. We yeah. talk about this level of courage and audaciousness. Yeah. He was 22 years old when he won the championship, yeah. and then coming out and changing his name, even against the wishes of his own mom and dad. Yeah. Just think about how powerful that was. Uh, so to b really be able to stand up to that kind of pressure uh, at 22 years old, he lost his title at 25. He didn't fight between the time he was 25 and 29 years old. I've always said that the best years of Muhammad Ali, we never really saw. Because between 25 and 29, those would have been his absolute prime years. So we saw, we saw up until 25 when he beat you know, Ernie Terrell and Cleveland Big Cat Williams, and you saw poetry in motion as a fighter. The Ali who came back at 29 against Jerry Quarry had slowed down. And think about that, he was out for three and a half years, and he was, I, he, I, I don't think I even really realized that until I watched the film. He was only given six weeks to prepare for that fight. I mean, just think about just how special you have to be mm. to do that. And then immediately after that, fought uh, uh, Oscar Bonavena, who was the, Jerry Quarry was the number two contender, Oscar Bonavena was the number one contender, and in his third fight, he fought Joe Frazier, the champ. I mean, no warm-up fights at all. Right back in the mix. It's just such, such a great athlete that Ali really, really, really was. Well, I thought it was interesting, too. Uh, again, you know, you, you only have 85 minutes for, for a documentary, and he's like a universal person. But remember the part where he would torture, he tortured two people. He, well, he tortured a lot of people, but... <laughs> in particular. <laughs> in particular, he tortured... Terrell and, and Patterson. And I remember my, I grew up in the South Side of Chicago. And, you know, um, when he, what he did to Terrell, see, in the film, you know, they showed, uh, who, who was it who was saying, oh, you know, it's it terrible. Uh, it was somebody who I thought would have known better when, when they said, it was terrible what you Robert did. Robert Lipsight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, it was terrible what you did to Terrell. And in our, in our community, that became the thing. It's like, what's my name? Right. You know, when you, when you fight or wrestle or whatever, you know, you say, what's my name? You know, that became, for right. us, so, right. and that, that shows a little cultural little thing here. Right. For a group of us, that's what you do. Right. You know, right. when somebody disrespects you or you beat somebody, it's fine. I remember fight, fighting Casey, my next door neighbor, you know, <laughs> like two, and it's like, you know, he slipped and fell, but it was like, <laughs> what's my name? <laughs> you know? But, but that became, in, 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 in my name, that became, to this day, yep. you know, right. what's my name, you know, right. where, where to, some, to somebody else, it could be, oh my God, how do you do that kind of stuff? You know, I guess, well, how do you do it? That's, what do you mean how you do it? That's what you do. Yes, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah, I don't know if this is a question. I mean, I'm going to make an observation. And one thing I wish was in the film was when he went to West Point. Mm. And when he went to West Point to talk to the cadets at West Point, as a, as a conscientious objector, which is something that must have taken a lot of guts, because you know West Point is not a place you go when you're a conscientious objector. <laughs> I mean, they're like the exact opposite of conscientious objectors. And he went there and he talked to the cadets. Sure. And I remember when that happened. I forget what year, but I was only a little kid. But I remember saying, that's, that's balls, you know. <laughs> but I got to tell you, I'm, I mean, it's clear I'm an ethnic white guy from the Bronx. I think that's pretty obvious. And... The thing I find interesting is what David Susskind said, that was my dinner table. That was my parents. Mm. That was my school teachers. Mm. And when we, we had, an, I mean, we didn't see black people. You, you just didn't see them. And when two black kids got enrolled in my Catholic school, they shut the school down. Wow. And the bishop, he disappeared. He, like, hid. The teachers <laughs> hid. The mothers came in and started saying all this nasty stuff in the classrooms about what would happen if black people got in the school. And of course, eventually the bishop was like, well, he you know, had to man up a little bit. They got the kids enrolled. But this was like 1972 in the Bronx. Wow. This wasn't like the Deep South. Right. Now, we were all raised on this like 
kumbaya Martin Luther King stuff. You know, everyone had to be happy, love one another and everything. But when the rubber hit the road, it was like, don't let them in my school. Mm. And the thing I found interesting is we had nine TV channels back then. That was it. And it was black and white because we didn't have color TVs. We had black and white TVs. And there was a show called Why World of Sports, sure. which I don't know if any of you remember that. <laughs> oh, sure. It was an awesome show. It was mostly 60 millimeter telecine stuff. And Muhammad Ali would go on with Howard Cosell. And remember, we didn't see black people. You know, we were just told they were bad and that this guy was really bad. And if everyone acted like that, I mean, you know, it didn't matter we had cousins coming back from Vietnam who were like never were normal again. You know, we were like taught this is bad. And when he would get on TV with Howard Cosell, we go, man, he's really cool. <laughs> right. I mean, he's good looking. He's smart. And it was also pretty clear Howard Cosell kind of liked him. And he was like this ugly, short, you know, I mean. <laughs> so, I mean, I think I have to say, I have to say I'm really grateful to your father because he was like a major role model for me as like a, a 10-year-old kid. Because, you know, you saw the cousin come back from Vietnam, never normal again. And then he would go up and say, well, we should go to Vietnam. And you go, well, yeah, you know, we shouldn't go to Vietnam. Mm. You know, the cousin was on heroin by then. He, was, he never recovered. He died broken down. And he said, yeah, we shouldn't go to Vietnam. And then these parents would stand, I still remember Mrs. Garbolano standing in front of the classroom and just ranting on how horrible things would be if black people were allowed in the school. Wow. And the teacher left the room. And then you go back and turn on Channel 7, and there'd be the wide world of sports, and you go, what would be the worst thing that would happen if Muhammad Ali came to my grammar school? That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. How about that? So I just want to say that. It Thank was you. really awesome, like, growing up with him. Because the thing is, you know, it was easy to like the, the older school civil rights people. It was easy to like Jackie Robinson. But when your parents were sitting at the dinner table right. talking like David Susskind was talking, and you probably remember this guy who went to Power Memorial High School, Catholic school that got shut down where Lincoln Center is now, Lou Alcindor, when he changed his name, my God, that was like, whew, you know, because the, the, you know, we all had to play basketball whether we liked it or not. So it was like really, these were contentious, freaking horrible issues. Right. And your father was like, how could you not like him? Right, that's right. Mia, you want to weigh in at all? He's a very lovable guy. I mean, he's charismatic. He loves people. He um, he's kind. People, there's so much that he does and has done that people don't see or even know about. My father would bring homeless people into the home with us, and they would stay. And I'm like, where are these people going to sleep? And with you, <laughs> you know. There's so wow. much that you don't know. I mean, there was a summer we gave mm. away a million dollars in cash. Mm. He does not care mm. about money, never mm. has. Mm. Um, so he's. The, the, I think that's why he's been able to, or was is, is the why he's the person he is. He's never been affected by money. You know, we needed to live, mm. obviously to support nine children. <laughs> but at the same time, um, it's just part of who he is, and, and he's strong in his convictions. And um, it's a blessing and a curse, but, you know, he, he made it work for him. Mm -hmm. um, and I, 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 I think he's passed that on to all of his children, because we're stubborn as he is. <laughs> you know, I'll be the first to say it, no, <laughs> and I'm not going to change my mind. <laughs> and, and we're all that way. You know, I think, I think Ali's... One of the great things that happened for all of us during that time was, was Ali having that platform, because he was the right one to have that platform. And not only what he, it wasn't just the issues he was speaking out about, but it was in fact his personality. Because even when you saw the scene, I think was it David Frost who said, you don't, you don't really believe that white people are devils. Come on, you don't really, I know that Elijah's teach, but you don't really believe that. But what he did was, it was really interesting. He, he, he stood up strong in that moment, right? Because you didn't want to, he, he couldn't walk away and have the word go out that, hey man, he's double talking. Because right. uh, that, that wouldn't play out well, you know, particularly in the, in the nation of Islam, number one, right. but in the broader black community. But there were a whole lot of black folk who were against racial injustice. They understood issues that, you know, were being perpetrated upon the black community by white folk and how they saw it. But they didn't necessarily believe that the white man was the devil. Right, so that was a little, it was a, that was really kind of on the margins. So behind it all, you kind of saw Ali as really this really good guy um, who everybody liked. Um, and he was doing what he needed to do and speaking out in ways that he needed to speak out. But behind that was not an angry black man. He was really a guy who really loved all people. And I think that spirit that he had helped carry the day yep. and helped carry his message uh, in ways that others who might have been deeper ideologues would not have been able to do. That's the last question, right? Okay, great. 
Well, that was actually uh, pretty close to what I was going to ask you all about. Ali was certainly the most photographed individual of his time, and we can thank Howard Bingham and <laughs> Neil Leifer and, and so many photographers for the character that they revealed in the photographs, which then were distributed so, so vastly. To me, it was interesting to see him kinetic, uh, to see him talking, to, to hear from him. That was unusual, let alone to see almost 90 minutes of it in a row. I mean, this is something which just doesn't happen now. We'd have to go to YouTube and assemble our own reels like this to get a sense of his essence. And I think one of the things that was interesting was that, um, Bill, you spoke about him uh, during uh, Terrell and, and Patterson kind of taunting him. I mean, I remember, my God, I mean, what he dished out to Sonny Liston uh, was, was certainly on a par. The interest, and, and on a par also with what we saw him receiving from Suskind, and I, I thought the Jerry Lewis bit was mm. just about the most mm. reprehensible uh, part in there. He could have said, well, yeah, I've seen your ratings, and uh, I've <laughs> yeah. seen your movies. Um, and th there was a remarkable restraint, and I, and I think that that's what you were just talking about, uh, David, that, that, that moved me in hearing him all of these different clips over a period of time, him being taunted, him knowing the power of taunting. We saw him use it so effectively in the ring, and yet given a chance to respond in a reflexive, defensive way, he never did. He maintained that cool, that he, this kind of preternatural cool mm -hmm. that he had as a kid, perhaps from starting his boxing career so young, but then certainly the circumstances that he found himself in, and it's, it's not even right to say that he found himself in, it's almost as if he sought it out, and as we've been saying, perhaps he was the best person, he was the right person in the right place. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. What we'll do is just take the, the final words from, uh, from folk on, on the panel. Uh, Bill, any, any final uh, words that you, you want to leave the audience with? Um, this, is, this is really is just great. I think you can never, we can never be reminded too much about everything that Ali stands for. I mean, beyond, I think that's the overriding message, I think, is just the power of conviction, the power. And, and, and the fact that, I mean, Ali's not a saint. You know, I think people right. with time, you know, he's a human being, you know, he's a, right. he's a human being. I, there are a couple of interesting documentaries that were done with Ali's relationship with Joe Frazier, mm, which yes. are completely fascinating because yeah. it shows yet another side of Ali just in terms of the showmanship, but also sort of compassion and second guessing and like, yeah, well, you know, maybe I was a little hard on him, you know, right. you know, but, but, but I just think that to me, the takeaway is just, I wish that this could be shown, this and this all Ali P's could be shown to contemporary athletes who've got a lot of potential power, great visibility. Say, this is how you can handle it. Mm -hmm. Don't get caught up in, right. in, in 60, 1960. This is not about 60s. Right. This has everything to do with 2014, 2015. Mm -hmm. This is how you can act today. That's right. You know, right. so to me, the takeaway is just. Uh, the beauty of courage and principle. That's great, great. Bill is the uh, author of $40 Million Slave and New York Times. Please thank Bill Roden for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and ask, Bill about, ask Bill about his TV show. Uh, yeah, yeah, please, Bill, tell us uh, very quickly about your, the TV show that, uh, the that you have as well. I saw those stars the night flipping you. Uh, yes, a regular uh, show, right? I, I didn't come prepared for a commercial. <laughs> 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 Just to have hey, listen. That's right. <laughs> no, wow, I, but tell us. But tell us. So we want to tune in. Um, uh, yeah. Um, there's a new network. What's not 299 called Epics, Epics Network. Epics, yes. And um, so I'm doing a show on Epics called Personal with Bill Roden. And basically, what we're doing is uh, kind of like the Charlie Rose of sports. You're talking about people who I kind of like, and I'm interviewing them for like you know a half hour. We did. Uh, we did Grant and Calvin Hill. Uh, was our first show, and uh, later this month, uh, Oscar De La Hoya uh, is um, going to come on the show, and Marion Jones, and 
uh, Venus and Serene and all this. So basically, and thank you for bringing it up. I wouldn't. I but, watched uh, it. It's really, really good. Yeah, I recommend it highly. Oh, well, thank you. I, you know, I guess I should become more of a. But anyway, yeah. So um, <laughs> what days is uh, it? It um, come on month. Like we're we're going to do it uh, maybe like once a month. And we're sort of in negotiations. I never thought I'd be using that word like negotiations to try to get it extended. But the thing I like about it is um, I like to have a forum to talk to, to talk about this to people I like to talk to about, you know, like whether it's talk about this kind of stuff with Grant and Calvin. And you know, because a lot of times you find um, uh, even like LeBron, it would be great to have like LeBron. Of course, because it's not so much, you know, I, we just, I just spent the last half hour killing athletes. But what I found a lot of times is that it's, it's the question. And you find out too, sometimes they're not asked the right question. Mm -hmm. And that flows into what you said about who makes our movies. There you go. And goes into, if you, if you go into Yankee Stadium, if you go into most press boxes, you'll be stunned by the lack of African Americans in media in general, and sports media in particular, it's like it was in 1955. And that flows directly into what a lot of the athletes are being asked, uh, the direction they're being prodded. You know, so, um, yeah, so anyway, but I hope that's what I like to accomplish with, with this show, just to bring on a lot of people and just kind of ask some of the, what I perceive to be the right questions and have some of the right conversations. We'll be watching. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Mia? I just want to say thank you for having me today. Um, I enjoyed the film. Again, it was my first time watching, so um, it was, uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I think there's a lot more to be said, and I'm sure that over time more documentaries will be out in regards to my father because there's so much more to the man than people really realize. Mm -hmm. And um, he's done so much and hasn't received the recognition for that, nor does he really want it. You know, he's just, He's a great man. There's nothing else to say. He told me just recently, he says, I'm the greatest. I said, what's that make me? He said, great. <laughs> 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 I said, okay. <laughs> I, I'll leave the rest. That but, ain't um, so bad either. No, that's not so bad. He <laughs> said, don't try to fill my shoes. I said, they're kind of big. So. <laughs> that's right. That's it. Nice warm round of applause for Mia, everyone. Mm -hmm.